Are you ready for this one? Who would have seen this coming? The Department of Justice has been illegally funding states to bribe them to accept red flag laws. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that one. Before I jump into that, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, and that's Lear Capital. Guys, the United States is broke and it's just going to keep on printing money, which is why you and I have to do something to protect our savings. That's one of the reasons that I buy physical gold and silver from Lear Capital. They ship it directly to my door in just a few days, and they can also tell you how to protect your retirements by adding gold to your 401ks or IRA accounts. Head on over to LearGG.com or call 1-800-260-5075 and get your free investor guide. With a Google rating of 4.8, over $3 billion in transactions, and over 90,000 happy customers, they'll be sure to help you start to protect your investment and your retirement with gold and silver. Once again, check them out at LearGG.com or 1-800-260-5075. Thanks to Lear Capital for being a sponsor of this channel. Hey guys, my name is Jared, this is Guns and Gadgets, and I bring you Second Amendment news every single day, no matter if it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent from litigation to legislation and everything in between. And all you gotta do is subscribe to this channel down below, hit that little red button, takes about a second of your life, and you will stay in the know here on Guns and Gadgets. I post multiple times a day, so check back frequently. And let's get into this one. So last year in the 117th Congress, we know that 16, I think it was 16, 16 Republican uh, senators sold us out by passing uh, agreeing to sign on to and thus having Joe Biden sign into law, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Now, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act was an attempt to fund a, uh, a scholarship uh, for red flag legislation. However, the way it was worded was the money couldn't go to states that didn't have the proper amount of due process in their extreme risk protection order laws. <laughs> yeah, that didn't matter. The bribery has ensued. On your screen is a letter that was sent to Amy Solomon, who is the Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General of the United States and the Director of the U.S. Department of Justice, Carlton Moore. It was also CC'd to the Attorney General Merrick Garland. This letter says, Dear Assistant Attorney General Solomon and Director Moore, the Department of Justice appears to have weaponized the Bipartisan Save for Communities Act to illegally fund ineligible red flag laws and bribe pro-gun states into passing gun confiscation laws. Therefore, we, the undersigned members of Congress, write to you today to demand accountability for the Department of Justice's willful violation of the plain text of the statute. Congressional Intent, States' Rights, and the Bill of Rights. The Bureau of Justice Assistant must swiftly correct this gross misuse of Bipartisan Safer Communities Act grant programs and instead respect the Second Amendment and due process rights of American citizens. Yeah, I'm sure they'll jump right on that. The 117th Congress passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, creating the Burn State Crisis Intervention Program to fund controversial extreme risk protection order programs, otherwise known as unconstitutional red flag gun confiscation orders, or GCOs, at the state level. The legislation's stated intent was not to force states who use grant funding for red flag laws to comply with strict and comprehensive due process requirements. This was the intent of the 117th Congress, given that every red flag gun confiscation law in this nation lacks sufficient and constitutional due process protections for gun owners. For this reason, the statute states that extreme risk protection order programs must include, at a minimum, certain due process protections which are not in effect in a single state's existing red flag law statutes. Since the passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, no states have revised their statutes to comply with the due process requirements imposed by the 117th Congress. Nevertheless, the Bureau of Justice Programs has funded every state that applied with red flag gun confiscation laws on the books without enforcing Congress due process requirements. The federal government should have no part in funding state-level gun confiscation programs which violate the due process rights of gun owners. 
Furthermore, the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act intent was not to require or incentivize states to adopt red flag laws. It is also unlawful to use federal grants to pay for lobbying efforts to influence the adoption of any legislation or law. To avoid any confusion, Idaho, Montana, and Wisconsin explicitly disavowed the use of any grant funding to promote or implement red flag laws since they do not have such a law on the books. These three states appear to be the only states without red flag laws that are clearly in compliance with the requirements enacted by the 117th Congress. Disturbingly, several states and territories without red flag laws on the books have been granted funding for the creation and implementation of such programs, including Arizona, Arkansas, Kansas, Minnesota, and West Virginia. It is unclear for what lawful purpose these approved grants could be used. It appears that this Bipartisan Safer Communities Act grant program is being used by the federal government to influence states into enacting red flag gun confiscation laws. According to the Bureau of Justice Assistant Senior Policy Advisor Tammy Brown, quote, if the state does not have a red flag law in place, it could be used for media campaigns or public service announcements that would encourage the state to incorporate that type of law. So it's really assisting those grantees that are looking at either improving implementations of their existing law or educating to potentially create that law within their state. And it appears that this federal bribery program is well underway. Minnesota did not have a red flag gun confiscation law when the Department of Justice announced the approval of a grant to the Minnesota Department of Public Safety for the creation and or implementation of extremist protection order programs on February 14th of 2023. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz signed a red flag gun confiscation order program into law less than 100 days later. Minnesota's example proves that this Bipartisan Safer Communities Act program is a federal bribe to influence state governments into enacting gun confiscation laws. The very statutes enacted by Congress have been completely ignored by the Biden administration. The Department of Justice appears to be willing to hand out grant money for gun confiscation to any state that applies, whether or not they have enacted due process protections or even have a red flag law in the first place. We, the undersigned members of Congress, demand transparency from the Department of Justice and Office of Justice programs into how states, territories, and D.C. are receiving funds from this program without having qualifying laws on the books. Please respond to the following questions as soon as possible, but no later than August 18th of 2023. Number one, given that Arkansas has no extreme risk protection order or law, for what lawful purpose did the Bureau of Justice Assistance award $3.2 million to the Arkansas Department of Finance and Administration for implementing ERPO programs and providing communication, education, and public awareness of ERPO in grant number blah, 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 blah. Two, given that Arizona has no extreme risk protection order law, for what lawful purpose did they get $6.1 million and change? Number three, given that Kansas has no extreme risk protection order law, why did they get two point, almost $2.7 million for that program? Given that Minnesota has no red flag law, why did they get $3.7 million and change? Given that West Virginia has no red flag law, why did they get $1.7 million in change? Given that Guam has no extreme risk protection order, why did they get $644,000 in change? Given that Puerto Rico has no red flag, why did they get $2.2 million in change? Given that the Virgin Islands has no extreme risk protection order law, why did they get $644,000 in change? Please provide the oversight rules and practices that the Office of Justice Programs follows in order to ensure that the legally appropriated funds from the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act are not being used in violation of the terms of the statute. Please provide the criteria that is used to award states with funds from the Burn State Crisis Intervention Program. So the frustrating part for me in reading this is that <laughs> if you go back to the videos I did on this when it was progressing through and they had the secret meetings and everybody, everybody was saying, this is not going to pass. There's no way the Republicans will, you know, sell out and approve a red flag uh, bribe law. There were only a couple of people saying it was going to happen, and one of them was this guy, and I got a bunch of flack for it. But I was telling you back then that all this was was money to bribe states to adopt red flag. Don't know why these members of Congress are just figuring out that now, because we've all known that 
for over a year. And I don't know why there aren't more signatures or co-signers to this letter, but right now, these are the co-signers of the letter. Feel free to pause this to see if your uh, rep or senator are on there. Uh, there are a few more that aren't on this list because I was told 37 people put their name to it. And I even did a video right after the implementation of this uh, burn grant program of what the states were going to get. I put that information out over a year ago. In fact, watch that video above. It lists what each state was going to get from this grant program. So again, why they're just talking about this now and we've known about this for over a year. Maybe they needed to wait until they had the Republican majority that was actually going to do something or call somebody on the carpet. I don't know. Uh, but they're going to uh, get some answers to their questions. And when I find out more about their answers, I will bring it to you. Also, thank you for the thousands of happy birthday wishes yesterday. I'm, I've tried to uh, respond to a lot of them, but I, I don't know if I can. But I've seen them all, and I thank you so much. It meant a lot for me. Uh, and those who went on and, and bought the Smokey the Bear shirt, thank you. Uh, Extra Large and 2X uh, have sold out yesterday right away. Another restock has been ordered, so they will be coming shortly. So thank you for that. Also, we launched my uh, We the People shirt in red, which is kind of sexy. I kind of like red shirts. kind of makes a statement. Let me know what you guys and y'all think about A, this letter, B, red flag laws, and C, your state's taking bribes to uh, force it down the throats of the citizens. Guys and gals, thank you so much for your time. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. Take care.